Um, this is the school I started. My first class was there. And probably you can see that it's written Madrasa Sultan Ibrahim Wayin. The reason is because it was right after the deposition of the Taliban. I have very strange memories from this school, but the strangest one is that for the first time at age six in my life, I experienced segregation at this school. Um, there were roughly 400 students from two different ethnic groups. The first one was Sunni Pashtuns, and then you had Shia Hazaras. And there was a clear segregation between the two ethnic groups. Um, I remember we were only hanging out with our ethnic group members. We used to take yogurt as a snack to school, but during the break we used to refuse Pashtuns yogurt because we thought there was a problem with their food, and they were doing the same thing to us. Um, back then I thought this was very unique to me, and people don't get the same experience around. But in 2014, I started volunteering, and there I discovered that a lot of people get the same experience. If not the same exactly, but they go through the, some kind of these experience where they um, get to know what is segregation. So that was the age, actually, 2014. I was like 17 or 18 that I got to, I got and asked myself, what is ethnicity? And why we have such et heated ethnic tensions in Afghanistan? So I asked a lot of people, my friends, and what do the organization where I was volunteering, and then we decided to start something which can challenge the established narrative of ethnicity in Afghanistan. Um, for me, this was this was really a headache when I was seeing I was talking to people that I got this experience when I was a child, and people were ignoring, saying that saying that um, it doesn't matter. And because you were a child, and at this age, a lot of things happen to you, you'll get to forget that. As we say, then a lot of people were saying this stuff to me. But actually, then I came to believe that this was really important in our life. Because that is the moment we get to know ourselves, we build a self-perception, and we know what is ethnicity. We ask ourselves, who are our co-ethnics, and what are some qualities? that put us together, what are some qualities that make us stand out from other groups. So that, is, that was the moment I tried to start something. And we um, so we, th this is what we started, it was the first summer program then, working on children. And what we do is, we bring youths of different ethnic groups in two different summer camps, one is for children and one for youth, and to make in a multicultural space, so they can interact with each other and they can discover the true face of children. Um, this is the 2017 cohort, as you can see a lot of slides, and this is the 2018 cohort, and we're moving to toward the third one nowadays. Um, we host a bunch of activities in Brindle. The, fir the first one is discussion. This allows them, they, they, the participants talk about ethnicity and how that has affected their life. So this let them challenge their own assumptions, their own perception of ethnicity in other ethnic groups in Afghanistan. We also have panel discussion where we, we invite um, writers, activists, to discuss what is ethnicity and how we can um, reduce the, ethnic, the level of inter-ethnic tensions in Afghanistan. We also have cultural practices, as you can see here, it's all dance, music, things like that. And we currently have proposals in this answer. And, and that's me, by the way. And, and that's also fake. Um, this is, I had a trip actually like uh, one, one, one week ago and I shared the same story with audience at Stanford um, on the global stage and uh, with global audience. Um, this year we were selected as one of the most one of the twenty two most impressive youth lead initiatives across Middle East and North Africa. And I had the honor to work with and I had the honor to represent Afghanistan and Stanford. Um, today I'm not really here to speak what we're doing. Today I'm here to speak what I've learned across the journey. And there are things I've learned. The first thing about ethnic tension in Afghanistan is, the, the first thing we need to know is that we have to get people connected here in Afghanistan. Because connection makes people open and tolerant. The more connected people are, the more, the more tolerant they are. When people are connected, they see diversity as normal. You see that everywhere around. And that's not something new to you. New is tension. But if they're disconnected, the diversity is something strange to them. Let's have a look at the map of Afghanistan. This is the ethnic breakdown of Afghanistan. And as you can probably see, 
you have different ending groups dispersed across different parts of Afghanistan. Um, what this actually meant is that over the course of history of this nation, um, we had people disconnected. One ethnic group residing at the bottom of the country, the next on the north, the next in the center, with few connections or barely they could con make any interaction. So what that, that meant was that they actually couldn't have a meaningful understanding of each other. Which means instead you have stereotypes, you'll have strange misconceptions and misunderstandings. So to address this one, to address this we bring people together. Even if you look at the map of Kabul now, you have the same thing. Certain ethnic groups reside in certain parts. The north is the base for one ethnic group, the south and east is for the other, and the west is for the other. So it means that people were not connected actually. And th that's part of what, I, what my experience suggests is that that's, my, that, that's, that's some sort of much of a potential reason here. Because people were not connected. They were disconnected and the stereotypes were gathered. Um, the next is we have to initiate a dialogue. There is probably you've always heard that we don't have to talk about things which are sensitive. And we've gotten the same thing over the four years that I've worked with this group. And um, we used to think that if we touch upon certain issues, we will have backlash. Certain things will backfire. You will have blowback that you cannot control that. So let's not talk about that. But that is a problem. Let's not talk in itself is a problem. Because the fact that we don't want to talk, the fact that we don't want to talk, doesn't really change anything. If we don't want to talk, the problem is still there. I mean, English is say that's the elephant in the room, but that's also anyway the, ele the elephant. And so what I've learned is that we have to talk about ethnic tensions in Afghanistan. And that is, if we don't talk about that, that will remain. You know, the con this country with this strange map has been ruled for much of its history by uh, ethnic nationalism, and that has been, and the state itself has been part of the problem rather than part of the solution. So, and people strangely now say that we don't have to talk about this stuff. They, and the feedback I've received from Africans is that we have to talk about them because we need to sort them out. Otherwise, the, the, the problems will not disappear. The third one is we need to reconsider our approach to diversity. Um, the, the problem with the Afghanistan is that it's not that we didn't try to um, make the, the society tolerant. The problem is that we did it wrongly. And that is we put a lot of emphasis when talking about unity and um, coexistence and pluralism, we put all the emphasis on um, the similarities, which is wrong, because coexistence, partnership, pluralism, diversity, they're not words about similarities, they're, they're words about differences. So when we want them in our country, we have to talk about the differences and we, how we can accept the differences. So there are, there, there are the three lessons I've learned, and I was actually, as you heard, I'm a writer, and I was writing research for Edinburgh Journal, and one of the things I came across when comparing youths of my generation at, and the previous generation, specific, specifically the, the one living in 1964 to 1973, which is called um, the Liberal Age of Afghanistan. And that was, they had the ability to define their own identities themselves. But we have inherited much of it. Back then, people, youths like me would say, I'm a Marxist, I'm an Islamist, I'm a Khalqi, I'm a Pashtuni, and what that really meant was that I have the ability to define my own identity. But what has happened to our generation is that we have inherited almost completely everything from our parents. And the problem with that is that the identity they have made and the perception they have developed was the perception of wartime, crisis times. So if we want to live in peace, in tolerance, we need to change this one. And that's part of the thing we can do. So let's redefine our identities. Thank you.